Ryan, I know you wanted to talk about First Thessalonians. Let's go. From yes. Chapter four. Did you have any thoughts about that email I sent you? It was. It made sense to me. All right. I mean, good to me. Yeah. Some folks try to use 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14 to support their argument that 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 contains components, or required criteria that a person must believe in, in order to be saved from hell. Let's examine this assertion and why it's completely wrong. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them, also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14. According to this conditional verse, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, something will happen as a result. So, what is it that will happen? Is the verse saying that if we believe that Jesus died and rose again that we will then be qualified to go to heaven having met the criteria to be saved from hell? No, it is absolutely not saying that. Although some try to impose that result onto the verse. The particular Thessalonian people Paul's addressing in this verse are already saved from hell, they are members of the body of Christ, they don't need to fulfill any condition to be saved from hell because they are already saved from hell. That being said, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14 Paul is absolutely telling those saints that there is a condition that they must fulfill. They must fulfill the condition of believing that Jesus died and rose again if they are to gain the result that Paul wants them to gain. So, if that result isn't being saved from hell, since they already are saved from hell, then what is the result Paul wants them to gain by fulfilling the condition of believing Jesus died and rose again? Well, it's right there in the second half of the verse. By believing that Jesus died and rose again the Thessalonians will know with certainty that resurrection is possible, resurrection having already been accomplished by Jesus. And thus resurrection is also possible for those members of the body who are currently physically dead, i.e. the, them, which sleep, of the second half of verse 14. The message of the death and resurrection of Jesus contained in the first half of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14 is the good news, gospel of God of Romans chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 that Paul also uses in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 to help members of the body understand the truth of literal, physical, bodily resurrection. Just like with 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4, the truth of the resurrection is milk truth the Thessalonians already knew, and Paul is reminding them of that knowledge they already know, so they can keep it in memory in order to use it to their advantage to gain what Paul wanted them to gain. Understanding that resurrection truth saves the Corinthians from the heresy of the sad Jew sees that there was no resurrection of the dead. And for the Thessalonians, that resurrection truth, brings comfort, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 18. And, salvation from the sorrow they were having in relation to the death of loved ones in the body, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. Again, all this gospel of God truth of the death and resurrection of Jesus is not hidden mystery truth, as it was revealed in the prophetic scriptures and thus it would be foolish for us to use it as the prescription for salvation from hell for people living today, during the mystery dispensation of grace. So just like in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4, the issue of this passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is not about salvation from hell, but rather about getting the firm and stable understanding of the truth of literal, physical, bodily resurrection, in order to strengthen one's walk i.e. it's a practice issue, not a position issue. Also, once again, burial is the elephant in the room. Incidentally, notice how the burial of Jesus isn't even mentioned anywhere in the entire chapter of 1 Thessalonians 4. Despite this fact, those who are unreconcilably convinced that 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 contains some supposed ed components or criteria required to believe in order to be saved from hell are quickly fine to abandon and betray their own components of the gospel criteria argument by throwing out the necessary burial component of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4. They do this by trying to defend their faulty view of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 by citing 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 
even though it makes no mention of the supposed required 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 burial which is a supposed necessary component and criteria of their view that 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 is a supposed salvation from hell prescription to be clear the burial is as necessary of a component as the death and resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 but in order to protect their sacred cow that is their miscategorization of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 being the prescription for salvation from hell. They'll use 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14, which excludes the burial, thereby throwing out the necessary component and required criteria of the burial of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4. I guess they're willing to throw away one of the components if they can keep the other two. Again, the point being that they betray their own argument in order to support their supposed components of the gospel criteria claim. These are huge hypocritical inconsistencies. Um, so I was talking to Craig about this, and because I, we were talking about it a little bit on, on Thursday night, right, all of us, and I started thinking about it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so, so position and practice, right? Um, you know, I started thinking about the verses in Titus we were talking about earlier. Titus 1, 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, right? Right. Uh, so, so works. What kind of works are these? We look in, in Titus 2, 7, and we see, we see in, all the, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, mm -hmm. sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Now, so this shows us right here that things that pertain to our walk, this doctrine that we're getting built up, we study and we get this doctrine and we, we uh, adhere to it and become established mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. and God considers that a work. Yes. Right, right? Yes. So, so if we are to tell somebody, if I were to tell somebody, for example, now let's, let's say, for example, that these people didn't, didn't misunderstand the context of 1 Corinthians 15, right? Right. Let's say I went up to a person who was a lost person, right? And, and I said, hey, can I share you, share you something uh, that I, I learned in the Bible? And they're like, share with you something I've learned in the Bible? And they're like, all right, sure, why not? I'm, right. I'm, I'm fine with that. So I said, all right, see this verse here in 1 Corinthians 15. says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which... I, I also received and how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And the person's like, all right, I've heard the verse. What's your point? What do you want to tell me? And I'd say, so the context of this verse is that these Corinthians were having um, some people come in and tell them that there was no such thing as physical resurrection. So they were getting stressed out about that and starting to believe that. And so Paul came along, he's their apostle, and he said, Hey, you guys remember how I told you when I first saw you, and, and you guys knew about this too, about this, this information about Jesus Christ, that he died and he was buried and he rose again. Mm -hmm. Well, if you remember that information, then you're not going to get tripped out, you know, tripped up by this, this lie these people are telling right. you about. The Sadducees about the, right, the Sadducees the, telling you this lie that resurrection is not real, you know. Um, so... So, you know, you just, just remember that stuff I told you so you don't get messed up and this doesn't, you know, stress you out. And then the person, was, you know, I'm talking to be like, all right, I see, that makes sense. Yeah. So I guess that's what, what, what it's saying. Why are you saying this to, to me? And I said, well, uh, I, want, I don't want you to go to hell. So I need you to believe that Jesus is your Savior, but I also need you to, to understand what doctrine is being put forth in this verse right here. And as long as you do those two things, then you're going to be saved from, from going to hell. That would be a false gospel, right? Sure would. Because I'm, just asking, him to, I'm to... asking him to do works. Right, right. Right? Now, what if I were to do that same thing, mm -hmm. but I was, but I were to tell you the wrong uh, teaching about this verse? What if I were to say, hey, um, let me tell you what this verse says. It says that uh, Jesus died and was buried and rose again, and in, unless you believe these components or this criteria, you can't go to heaven. Now, I'm teaching this doctrine for, for a, a, it's a practice issue, and I'm teaching it incorrectly, right? But I'm still saying you need to understand this practice-related 
doctrine mm -hmm. incorrectly this time to be saved. And if you don't believe it, you're not saved. Am I therefore preaching a false gospel that, that is going to lead them to hell if that's the only thing they've ever trusted and they go and get in a car wreck and die like a, like a day later? Because it'd be similar, like, is like they, I, I, I could tell people yeah. like, what if I told somebody, uh, you know the, um, you know the verse. Let me give you an example. You know the verse in um, the Gospel of John, where where uh, the John the Baptist says, uh, this is John one twenty nine, where it says, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and say, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What if I were to tell? What if I were to tell a guy? Hey, I want to, you know, same scenario, right? He's a lost guy. And I say, you see this verse, you know? And he's like, all right. And I say, um, well, the reason that, that John the Baptist is calling Jesus Christ the Lamb of God is because he's making a reference to the sacrificial system that Israel had where they'd have to get the spotless lamb and the lamb represented sinlessness. And in reality, Jesus Christ was a picture. There's a picture of Jesus Christ the whole time. He's actually the sinless lamb and he's able to have um, to offer you know a, a adequate sacrifice to pay for their sin right he's like well why are you telling me this and I say like well you need to believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior but you also have to understand this doctrine about what the lamb really signified right that would add, that would be a false gospel right, I'm adding add I'm adding something. practice or, or walk knowledge that right, you get right, built right. up these works of, of Titus right right and I'm saying that you also need those works to be saved right well what if I were to say to the guy uh, instead, what if I were to say to the guy, all right, see this verse here about, you know, uh, John the Baptist saying, behold, the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world, talking about Jesus, Jesus coming unto him and saying, behold, the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world. And the guy was like, yep. And I was like, what that's talking about is that, you know, Jesus, you heard of Jesus, right? He's like, uh-huh. Uh, he had this, uh, this magic power where he could turn uh, himself into an actual little lamb. Like he was like a transformer, but like biologically he can turn himself into a lamb. Mm -hmm. The guy's like, I never heard that. And I was like, yeah, but that's what this verse is saying. And unless you believe that, plus that Jesus is your savior, you're not going to go to heaven. That would be a false gospel, sure, right? Sure. But the point, my point is the same, is that what they're doing with 1 Corinthians 15, they're saying they're teaching it wrong, but then they're saying that wrong teaching plus Jesus as their savior is what gets you saved. And if you don't believe that wrong teaching about walk-related doctrine, plus Jesus being your Savior, then you're not going to go to heaven. So They made, might, they made uh, uh, the cross of Christ of none, none effect. effect. So, so my, my question is, 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 is pe are people that are, are preaching 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, as a way to get to heaven, are they, not, are they preaching a false gospel, a gospel that is not able to save? Yes, because they're telling the heathen that they have to believe something that is that Paul is not telling heathen to believe. They're adding a they're adding a uh, a, a, pract, a practical thing a practice work. to that a practice work to that person's salvation. And and it's a, and it's a practice which has made it of none effect. And it's not even a valid practice work practice right. work because they're teaching it incorrectly. But it's still a practice work nonetheless. We know from Paul earlier in chapter in, in chapter one of First Corinthians, <clears throat> as you know, Ryan, that when you add anything to the gospel of Christ, the 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 the, the, the clarity of, of salvation, right? Mm -hmm. By grace through faith plus no works. When you add anything to it, it nullifies it. It makes it of none effect. It does. Because I was I was thinking It makes know, it of none effect. What's behind Christendom and even even uh, people who rightly divide? Pushing this First Corinthians fifteen one through four so heavy as the. It's interesting that you said Christendom because it is true that many in Christendom use the same passage, right? Which you got to think as a dispensationalist when we're using the same passage for the same reason as apostates. That needs to say ding ding ding. Right, something that wrong should set, set off an alarm, right? But but I, I was just yeah. thinking the fact that that is so prevalent. I mean, Satan. There's got to be something that Satan's gaining from it. And I'm wondering if that's the case. He's got folks think that they're saved when they're not. See, he, he, two, th two things, right? He has folks who are teaching that to, to heathen mm -hmm. to think they're serving God, right? That they're getting they're winning souls for Jesus, right? right? For right. the kingdom, one. So they think they're they think they're serving God, and then they have others thinking 
that by believing what they were told that they're saved and they're not. And it, it given them a false sense of security. You know what it's similar to is, uh, is you know how we have verses that show that um, prayer is a work. It's considered a work. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have brothers who labor in prayer. Mm -hmm. Paul talks about, you know, um, striving in prayer. You know, we don't need to strive or labor to be saved from hell, right? And yet, these yep. and Christendom goes out and says, I need you to pray a pray prayer, prayer. In, order, in order to be saved. Yep, yep. They well, say again, it. they're adding a work, right? Uh, and, and dispensationalists and, you know, Pauline uh, grace believers understand that, that you don't need to pray a prayer to be right with God. They understand right. that. But they don't understand this this work of believing a false teaching about First Corinthians. It's it's the 15. sacred cow, right? Right. Basically, you, you, you just assign basically ninety percent of church to, to to hell because that's what they believe in, right? This, this, I mean, yeah, uh, like what percentage it's, it's, of people are trusting? It, I, exactly. I see I that's, see people putting it on their uh, Facebook pages. I I'm saved because I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, or something. Like, you well, know, well, where's, like, where's the mercy with that? I mean, can God figure out that hey, they've been led down the the wrong slope. Uh, 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 well, that gets game. down to each individual, Craig. They might articulate that or type that, but maybe sometime during their lifetime as a dispensationalist, they've come to understand or hear someone like, like me. I, I bet there are folks who will listen to me uh, give a clear gospel who will still write on their, on, I mean, Doty still used the term born again. I've had six mm -hmm. conversations over seven years with Doty about born mm -hmm. again. So the point is, that's a such case because the, I know there are people right now who listen to us week after week, every 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 study Ryan posts, and they could they would easily put on their Facebook "Saved by the Death, Burial, Resurrection." Yeah, uh, I heard so, I, so I I could I could believe someone could be saved, Craig, but still uh, doesn't have the wherewithal not to write that. So I would mm -hmm. say with such cases, I, I couldn't. Tell and you. Uh, I was talking to a guy who was saying that. Uh, you know, like I mentioned that mm -hmm. that because uh, he's like, well, then what's 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 the prescription for salvation from hell? Then I was like Romans three, uh, you know, nineteen through twenty six, and then he was saying, well, there's no there's no resurrection in there, um, and I'm like, well, the resurrection is mentioned in Romans one one through four, so it's prefaced. But, it's all yeah. It's the but first but that being said, yeah. that just like with the Philippian jailer, you don't need to, that's information that you know afterwards. That's that's Titus, uh, you know, one sixteen, Titus two seven, doctrine, works doctrine that that comes later. You don't and, need and, to know Ryan, that to be saved. And Ryan, you've already mm -hmm. showed. By the time we get to Romans three, Paul is he's building a case in Romans one and Romans two, right? Mm -hmm. He starts the book off mentioning the resurrection. That's the context. Everything is the context of the gospel of God, right? Mm -hmm. The resurrection of his son. Yeah, it's, so it doesn't have to be mentioned in Romans 3. It's already in, in the mix. So, you know? so yeah. I, I just wanted to reiterate, I got this pushback and saying, well, you can't say that salvation is just believing in Jesus because that's in the gospels about believing in Jesus. But again, I was like, but it's what, what you are to believe about Jesus is different. In the gospels, they were called to believe that he's their Messiah. Right. And they never had salvation as a present possession. They they had to endure to the end to get it, right? We have all the verses that back program. it up. Yep, yep. But with Paul talking in Romans three, mystery, truth, that, that hidden information that's about the unique prescription for salvation from hell today is that you believe in Jesus as your savior because you have a sin debt that needs to be taken care of. And by believing in him as the savior for that sin debt, then you are saved. That's the different thing, the different offer of belief in Jesus that you're that's being why he called it, it's being extended to you. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Yeah. That's mystery doctrine that Gentiles, without having to confess Jesus as Messiah, Paul, Paul doesn't require us to confess Jesus as the Son of God. And, he, and so that's <clears throat> listen, knowing that Jesus is the Son of God is is a for us today is a practice thing, learning more about who he is. Mm -hmm. Paul doesn't require that for salvation. I don't have to confess Jesus yeah, as the again, Messiah. That, that verse about that man Jesus, right? right that, man, that we have salvation. It, it's, it's it's he's the issue, not not the the, the through this the man Roman mechanical God. details of the cross work or or his yeah. hypostatic union or something. That's all stuff that you it comes from study afterwards. Yeah. Acts chapter thirteen, verse thirty-eight, thirty-nine. Be it be it known, therefore, unto you, men and brethren, that through this man. Yeah is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins and that by him all who believe are justified from all things which they cannot be justified by the law of Moses. Did Peter say that or Paul? Paul. Paul. 
the Apostle Paul. Acts 13, 38, 39. Pontius Pilate, you know, Pontius Pilate, he also said, he said, he is the man, right? What do you mean by that? Well, he, he, he wasn't presenting Jesus to Israel as a savior, though. Paul was. Well, he was being sarcastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pontius Pilate, he was, he was a heathen <laughs> Roman. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so going on, going on to, um, First Thessalonians 4. Mm -hmm. So the guy I was talking to brought, tried to bring this up to support his, you know, uh, sacred cow of 1 Corinthians 15, mm -hmm. 1 through 4, being the prescription for salvation from hell today. And, and he's like, see, so it says, well, let's start with verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So his argument is, in le so he was saying that unless you believe that Jesus died and rose again, then you're not going to be raptured. And and my, and I'm saying that's not what the verse is saying. Yeah. <laughs> it's never said. It doesn't say anything about that. Was crazy. Right? If he said that, that's insanity. Mm -hmm. But do you, can you see? Can you see why he's making that argument? Yeah. I mean, it's a dumb argument, but why he's making it is is because he's not understanding the context that Paul's saying that these people are going to be. They're gonna they're gonna resurrect, and again, it's the same reason that you know this is because. But he leaves out the burial this time because he's not he, he, he's not. Was, was uh, this fool is reading it like this. For if we believe, he's saying here's the condition. Yep. yep. Right. He, no, there there is a condition, but the condition isn't our salvation. The right, 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 right. If you right. don't want to sorrow, it's funny because <laughs> now now that you said it, I, he he's saying it like this is what you need to believe. Right. But no, no, that's not. Paul, Paul is tell, tell him it, not to be safe from hell, right? But not to do, be safe from you hell. You need to believe that if you don't want to be have sorrow about these people, right? That's the context. That's the context, though, yeah. and that's what I said is that there is a condition that Paul is saying that mm -hmm. that, that that you won't. This condition won't be met. This uh, this Paul wants them to gain something, right? And by and the way, they only, already say he calls them. It's brilliant. true. I, I mentioned that okay. too. Okay, go ahead. Um, but so obviously they're not going to gain salvation from hell because they already have it, right? But, but Paul does want them to gain something, and, and the only way they can gain it is by meeting this condition of believing that Jesus died and rose again. But the thing that he wants them to gain is to not have sorrow about these members of the body of Christ that are already dead. He doesn't, and... and uh, well, it says in verse 13, that, here's the purpose, right? Mm -hmm. That ye sorrow not, right. even as others would have no hope. And, and in verse 18, it says, comfort one another with these words. He wants you to have comfort, comfort. and he doesn't want you to have sorrow. sorrow. It has nothing to do with salvation from or, hell. Or, or more sorrow it has like to do uh, with salvation from sorrow about members of the body of Christ dying. That's the, the, the word salvation is not even in there, but it's similar to the salvation of 1 Corinthians 15. He wants them to be saved from the oppression of that heresy of the Sadducees that there's no resurrection. And he doesn't want that to, to pollute their thinking and, right, and ruin their walk them. and eventually yeah. spoil yeah. their reward if, yeah. they let, if they let it metastasize, right? And, and yeah, the context of this is, look, <clears> he <throat> says that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. That we, we won't sorrow the way the world mm -hmm. sorrows when they lose a lot. Yeah. So, so anyway, in light of this, uh, notwithstanding, in light of this, I said, uh, I said to him, so... Tell me this, if you really think that people reading Romans 3, uh, 19 through 26 and believing it can't be saved, then your argument is because the resurrection is not being uh, talked about in those verses, right? Can you cite any other verse to back up that claim other than 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 and, and uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18? Because I, because I know he can't, because this is what he's using to to support that. Because mm -hmm. there's no other verses that back that up. Um, but I, but then I was going to say, here's the here's the big issue though, and this is what I, I emailed you about, is that the burial is not even mentioned in First Thessalonians four, right? And not nowhere in the chapter. And and you can't tell me that First Corinthians fifteen one through four doesn't make burial as big as a condition as. Sure. As as death and resurrection, sure. it's it's equally, it's equally necessary in, in the, the context tripart. of that. It's like the three you need mm -hmm. all. I, I think and, and you, you weren't part of this discussion, Darnell. But there's this big thing that you must, in order to be saved, you must believe in these three components. Mm -hmm. They call it DBR: is death, well, and, burial, and resurrection. And, and, and we were saying and that it's he doesn't true, even mention it's it's burial, true, but it's not salvation from hell. Not salvation it's, from hell, right, right? But that's my point. Yeah. If you look at if you look at verse. 
Well, know, that's another. That's another thing. Condition, yeah. Yeah, that's that's also a condition, mm -hmm. uh, according to this. But again, it's not salvation from hell. It's salvation from the heresy of the Sadducees that there's no bodily resurrection, because mm -hmm. it says, "By which ye are also saved, if you keep in memory that what I, um, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, and according to the Scripture, uh, uh, died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried." And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. All three of those components, as they like to say, those criteria, are necessary to have that salvation of verse 2. And if you want to say... The salvation of verse 2, right? right. Which is not soul Which is not soul salvation. salvation. Right. But if you want to pretend that that is soul salvation and then go back to 1 Thessalonians 4 and say that, that this passage supports 1 Corinthians 15, then you're just basically taking the... The component of burial and just throwing it under the bus. Yeah, because you ain't using First uh, Thessalonians four fourteen, because there's no burial. There's no burial. There. It doesn't support that. So what do you think that Paul, Paul says, uh, you know, he's telling you two different things. In, in First Corinthians fifteen, he's saying you need death, burial, and resurrection to make sure that you you get saved uh, from hell. But then in First Thessalonians four, he says all you need now is is uh, to believe in the resurrection and and the death to be raptured, because that's inconsistent. You have an inconsistency there. You're being Inconsistent. Okay. And uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I just, you, that's a big elephant in the room. So my point is, is that if you're trying to discredit Romans 3, 19 through 26 as the prescription for salvation from hell by citing 1 Corinthians 15, uh, and, and it doesn't have the component of resurrection, and then you're using 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, 14 out through the 18, of there. then you're taking out the comparial, uh, the, not, sorry, the component Chronic of burial. burial. Yep. So, so then you're basically defeating your own argument. Right. You're, you're saying that you're if saying they're all that, important, uh, right? They're equally yeah. important in First Corinthians yeah. 15, right? If it's like it's like they're saying, well, two out of three ain't bad. I no, guess I'll just I'll just I'll, I'll go with this this verse because at least I get to keep two of these things that I'm trying to right. put people under bondage of believing unless they or else they go to hell. Yeah. Salvation by elimination. You know, so um, so yeah, so I mean, uh, I, I think that that makes I think it was all good. Yeah. pretty clear. You, you good, good. I don't know how yeah. how much it's gonna convince, yeah. mm -hmm. dude, but you know, or people in general, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, hopefully, uh, so I'm wondering, do you think that we this so if so two points that I raised in this discussion we've been having. One, it seems like there's this landmine of telling somebody they need to preach an incorrect understanding of walk-related doctrine of 1 Corinthians 15 plus Jesus as your Savior to be saved from hell is like a landmine because it's it's not a saving gospel because you're adding works. Right. And then another point is this uh, this kind of go-to to 1 Thessalonians 4 because we did mention four verses that mentioned the, the death and resurrection but less, yeah. left out the burial. Uh -huh. The other three are clearly not related to you couldn't even twist them in any way to be right, talking right. about salvation from hell mm -hmm. this one the only way they're twisting it is like you said he thinks that if means like condition upon you know are you going to go you know right. go to heaven unless you do this but we pointed out that and, and he says see rapture it's talking about rapture so you're not going to get raptured unless you believe but we pointed out how that doesn't make any sense but my point is is that if this is a, an avenue that the people that are trying to fight against the truth that First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is not the prescription for salvation from hell. If this is an avenue they're going to go down, should we add that? Should we address that and add that to this thing that we're doing, this video we're making? I'll leave it, I'll leave it up to you. you want to yeah, but I think, I think maybe we might want to add, just add something <clears throat> quick about that. And uh, what do you think about adding something? Or should we say something about the fact that First Corinthians 15, if you present it the way it's being presented, that... You're adding works to uh, to salvation, or is that a bridge too far? Is that gonna is that gonna put people off too much? Is that too much of a shock to the system, or are we are we doing are we doing a disservice by not to the, to to people by not ma making mention of that? Do we need to do we need to? Is it, well, the goal the original goal was to keep it concise. But I mean, isn't that really important to to point out? You know, this isn't just something that. Eh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's just better that you do Romans 3. It's like, literally, if, if, you, if you go up to somebody and you tell them they need to believe in Jesus Christ 
and also this misunderstanding about 1 Corinthians 15 doctrine that's for your walk that you're preaching incorrectly and say that both of those things are necessary for salvation and, and somebody believes only that and then they, they get hit by a car the next day, they're not saved. Yeah. Maybe that's something we need to let them know that that's, it's not a saving gospel and you can't, you, it's dangerous, potentially. Yeah, and the main difference between both of those passages is that Romans 3 is about the blood and those passages are not. They're about what you are saying earlier about tenets of the doctrine that you don't learn about Jesus. Later Christ. on, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not about belief in Jesus alone. It's belief right. in Jesus plus belief in R- Romans chapter three. doctrine that, that is a work according to Titus, but taught incorrectly. Romans chapter 3, unlike 1 Corinthians 15, unlike 1 Thessalonians 4, is actually dealing with your soul's salvation from hell, the penalty for your sins. Mm-hmm. That's what Romans 3, those pa- that, 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 that passage is dealing yeah. with. This one's not, nor is the one in 1 Corinthians 15. Yeah, 1 Thessalonians 4 is not, 1 uh, Corinthians 15 Corinthians is not. So, so if you, you take, verse, you take uh, passages in the Bible that are not talking about salvation, you teach them incorrectly, and you say, understanding that incorrect teaching about verses that have nothing to do with salvation from hell, plus Jesus being your Savior. By the way, works passages, passages that Titus calls works passages, right? You're adding works to, to, to a belief in Jesus Christ alone. So that's dangerous. Yeah, so go, go ahead and write something up. We'll, just, we'll record something. All right. What happens when I die? All people are sinners, and sin leads to God's judgment. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Romans 1, 18 through 20. That judgment of God is death, and that judgment day is coming soon. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Romans 1, 32. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, Treasure up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Romans 2, 5. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Romans 2, 16. That death is what the Bible calls the second death, which is everlasting punishment in the lake of fire. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation 21, 8. No one is good enough to escape this judgment of the second death. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Romans 3, 10 through 12. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans 3, 19 through 20. That's the bad news. But the good news is that God has made a way to escape this second death. That way is through the power of the blood of Jesus. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past 
through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Romans 3, 21 through 26. It is through God's grace, by your faith alone, without any works, it is believing, trusting in Jesus as your Savior. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Romans 4, 5. If you have trusted in Jesus as your Savior, you are now forever saved from that second death. That's God's grace. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Romans 5, 1 through 2. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Romans 5, 8 through 11.